A Mouse by the House by Artie Knapp. A mouse in the grass ran about, stopping by the water spout, nibbling on something I could barely see and didn't seem to notice me. Not realizing he was trapped, he just chewed on his meal tightly wrapped. To get the mouse's attention, I threw a pebble his way, but he kept to his meal without sway. Again and again I tried, but to no effect, feeling put off and puzzled by his disrespect. But something changed inside me as the mouse finally looked up. His eyes were innocent and curious, like that of a newborn pup. He didn't seem to mind my being there, barely gave a look, much less a stare. Then off he went back to the grass, nary a glance at me. I learned later he got glasses, and now he can clearly see. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jim Heath, and I'm going to be reading you what Lou could do. As I climbed up on top of my grandfather's knee, he said, sit down, for I have a story for you. The whole thing begins with a girl named Marie and her not very ordinary young brother, Lou. At the time of the story, Marie is just three, while two whole weeks earlier, Lou had turned two. And she was the only one right there to see just what her young brother was going to do. Outside of their house was a great big oak tree, and how he got up it, no one quite knew. He had to come down, on this all could agree, but just how to do it, no one had a clue. For this tree was as big as big trees could be, of trees that same size there were only a few. It was the biggest one east of the Caspian Sea, and much bigger than the one they had in Peru. They couldn't climb up it to get poor Lou free. They tried using ladders. They tried a crane too. A hot air balloon? Maybe that was the key. But it wasn't. They just have to try something new. If anyone would have thought to ask little Marie about what had happened to her brother Lou, they all could have stopped working diligently. But no one had asked, so they worked the night through. Two whole weeks later, Lou was still f in the tree. He moved into the nest of a large cockatoo. And on that second week, unexpectedly, he stepped off a branch, and then he flew. The people below him, the people below, they all started to plead, but Lou didn't hear them. He was well out of view. When he came back flying back at a quarter past three, the crowd down below all gave a loud whoo. And Lou's little face, it was glowing with glee, even though he had caused quite a hullabaloo. And all of that time, it was known to Marie just what her young brother could do. Many years later, away moved Marie, away to a land that was called Timbuktu. She missed her young brother most definitely, so she thought up a way to bring him along too. She had a nice house, but in the yard had no tree. So she planted a small one and watched as it grew. More time went by and waited did she, always looking away up in the big sky of blue, looking way up for her young brother Lou. I climbed down from my perch on my grandfather's knee and said, that story was nice, too bad it's not true. To which he shook his head very delicately, stood up and coughed and let out a small coo, and then up and away. Hello, I'm Sasha and I will be reading Big chickens fly the coop. Four big chickens sat on their nests and sighed. It's nice and safe at home in the coop, said one of the chickens. Yes, said the others. We should always stay home. We could always stay home. We would always stay home. Except we've always wanted to see the farmhouse. That's true, said the chickens, and they climbed out of their nests and headed out of the coop. Partway across the farmyard, the chickens stopped. Is that the farmhouse? asked one of the chickens. It has a roof. They tiptoed closer. It has a door. They stuck their necks out. It has a tail? It's a doghouse! The chicken... The chickens flounced, trounced, and body bounced. The dogs pronounced, drooling muzzles dribbled, frightened yard birds quibbled, sharp teeth crashed, pointed beaks smashed, snouts snapped, wings flapped, until four slobbery chickens ran all the way back to the coop. We should have stayed home. We could have stayed home. We would have stayed home. Except, we want to taste the bugs at the farmhouse. That's true, said the chickens, and they headed out of the coop. 
Partway across the farmyard, the chicken stopped. Is that the farmhouse? asked one chicken. It has a chimney. They tiptoed closer. It has a seat. They stuck up their necks out. It has four tires. What could that be? It's a tractor. The chicken scritched, hitched, and flip switched. The tractor twitched into life. The rusty engine roared. Startled heartbeats soared. Black smoke spewed. Foul moods brewed. Eyes burned. Guts churned. Until four so sooty chickens ran all the way back to the coop. We should have stayed home. We could have stayed home. We would have stayed home. Except we want to see the view from the farmhouse. That's true, said the chickens, and they headed out of the coop. Partway across the farmyard, they stopped. Is that the farmhouse? They asked. It has a gate. They tiptoed closer. It has a window. They stuck their necks out. It has hay. It's a barn. The chickens stomped, womped, and clippity clomped. The horses chomped at the bit. Skittish ponies bolted, frazzled feathers molted, hard shoes kicked, wing tip tips flicked, manes whipped, tails flipped, until four saddle sore chickens ran all the way back to the coop. The chickens sat on their nests and sighed. We'll never get to the farmhouse, said one of the chickens. No, said the others. The dogs are too loud. The tractor's too dirty. The horses are too wild. The chickens sighed again. It's too hard. Except chickens can be loud. Chickens can be dirty. Chickens can be wild. That's true, said the chickens. And we really want to see the farmhouse. Four big chickens climbed out of their nests and headed out of the coop. When the dogs barked, the chickens fluttered over the fence and landed on the tractor. When the tractor smoked, the chickens flopped off and landed in the horse on the horse's back. When the horse bucked, the chickens flipped off and landed in front of a house. Is that the farmhouse? asked one chicken. It has a roof. It has a door. It has a chimney. It has a seat. It has a window. It has a gate. It must be the farmhouse. The chickens bugged, slugged, and bear hugged. They viewed, shooed, and woo-hooed. They stayed, played, and egg laid. All day long, the chickens glanced, pranced, and tap danced until they noticed their own coop right next door. It must be true, said the chickens. And now we can go to the farmhouse anytime we want. Four slobbery, sooty, saddle sore chickens started all the way home. Kate's Island Home by Barbara L. Cannell. A long time ago, there was a young girl named Kate. She lived with her family on a great big lake. The island was a wonderful place to call home, for there were so many places that she could roam. Kate's best friend was her dog named Max, but he was no friend to the island's cats. He would chase them up a tree, and when he left, they could finally flee. There were forests for picnics and flowers to pick, and fish in the lake that swam pretty quick. There weren't any cars to avoid on her bike, or even if she was taking a hike. She'd pick vegetables she'd sown from seed, from the garden to the table, how delicious indeed. When all of her chores were finally done, it was time to go out and have some fun. She remembered the creatures she had come to know and spent each day watching them grow. In summer, she rode around the shore, biked, swam, and did so much more. The island was peaceful and offered so much. She often stayed outside until way after lunch. In winter, she made snowman from fresh fallen snow, skated the frozen lake as fast as she could go, sped down the hills on her brand new sled toward the lake that lay just ahead. Darkness came quickly on those long wintry nights. 
but Coco and a log fire make everything all right. Each night before sleep, she thought of her day, smiled, and then fell asleep right away. With her dreams of fond memories, of creatures she adores, and the life she enjoyed while being outdoors, it's time to say goodnight to a girl named Kate, who lived with her family on a great big lake.